morning, uh, <coughs> distinguished guests, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. So, this morning, uh, on behalf of the Trans Organizing Committee for the 14 A Trans Seminar Conference, I'd like to apologize uh, sincerely regarding this uh, technical difficulty. I think we are getting adjusted to the new normal, but I think something happened. So, right now we are ready to go. So, we have been connected, I think, to our friend from abroad, especially the speaker and also our uh, active participant for this uh, <coughs> 14 a, a annual conference. So in the morning, we will have this uh, conference program on the opening session, followed by the keynote speaker by His Excellency, uh, and then we will have the first session before the break. And <coughs> without further ado, which we, I think we are a bit behind the schedule, First, may I invite uh, Dr. Jula Sukmanov, the A Trans Chairperson, to give an introduction and welcome message. Uh, please, Dr. Jula. Thank you. Your Excellency. Uh, Mr. Akom, the Premier President, Minister of Finance, Mr. Th Satoshi Kamada, Executive Director of International Association of Tra Traffic and Safety Science, or IAS Japan, distinguished guests, speakers, HR members, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A very warm welcome to all of you to the 14th HR Annual Conference. We at HR are Really delighted to host today gathering. Looking back into the memory lane, on the 4th of May 2007, a group of keen academics, researchers, and transport practitioners joined hands to discuss seriously on forming a non profitable and appeal academic research activities for the benefit of society at large, which has become ASEAN Transportation Research Society or a trans nowadays. Every aspect of li our lives has been affected by the pandemic of COVID-19, as it has been nearly two years since the pandemic. Large, large parts of the world are emerging from the lockdown and slowly restarting the economy. It is obvious that things are still far from back into the more normal. The experience of lockdown has brought the limitations of urban mobility, which has underlined an important aspect of the issue of proximity applied to the urban everyday life. So it is vitally important for cities to rethink planning policies. Moving from city planning to urban planning urban life planning, acting on the dynamics of space and time with the imposition of the issue of geographical proximity as a factor for the calibration of the spatial reorganization of the services, businesses, and the management of so, uh, social dynamics. It remains unclear how long the recovery will take, what the normal life will look like, and what th this means for our as well as socioeconomic characteristics and environment impacts, such as the decarbonization. On this 14 years of operations, in collaboration with International Association of Traffic and and Safety Science, or IATS. This annual conference is on transportation of, for a better life, a future potential of transportation and urban model post-COVID era. We aim at providing potential policy measures for the coping with this uncertain future. In addition to this, this year, we initiate a trans young researchers forum to provide a broader opportunity, not only to the young researcher, but also students at large to present their research outputs 
and to share their knowledge and ideas through paper presentations. This was taking place on on online meeting yesterday. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure that all of us will learn a lot from our distinguished guest speakers on the benefit of transportation and open mobile and digitization platform, decarbonization and road safety. Our ATRAN members and staff work enthusiastically and relentlessly to, for the preparation and the making this annual meeting interesting and productive. We wish to ensure that all distinct guests and participants gain many diverse uh, ideas and hope you can utilize this opportunity for the network building and the cross culture exchange with one another. ATANS will always take steps forward to contribute to our dynamic society through the accumulating research and knowledge on transportation and innovation technology. Apart, uh, apart from that, public safety, energy, and environment to providing opportunity to share the outcome with all of you. Last but not least, ATRAN is greatly in debt of International Association Traffic and Safety Science or IATS for the funding of ATRAN's academic activities. Without the continuous support from them, ATRAN wouldn't have come this far. I hope you will enjoy the discussion today and pay it forward by making it fruitful and beneficial for others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Tulasukmana, for a very kind uh, welcome message. And uh, next, uh, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Satoshi Kamada, Executive Director of the EAS, to give a welcome message, please. Uh, Is it OK? Can you see it? Yes, yes, we can see it. Uh, I'm Kamada, uh, Executive Director of International Association of Traffic and Safety Sciences here in Tokyo. Uh, we are very pleased to be able to co-host this annual conference. I think uh, this is a very wonderful event with a wide range of interdisciplinary and international discussions on transportation. I would like to express my gratitude to your Excellency Mr. Arkham and Tom Peter Baisit and everyone who came as a guest of honor. The situation of COVID-19 is still severe, and yet members uh, participate online from Japan. I would like to express my respect to all of the ATRES people who made every effort in preparation. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to briefly explain the current situation in Japan. Future outlook seems to be a unclear COVID-19 and turbulent international situations. COVID-19 had a big peak in this summer and has come down uh, to an extent. Uh, people's activities in Japan are recovering. Economy is also recovering through uh, twists and turns, but the outlook is still uncertain. Exchanges with foreign countries are still severely restricted. Uh, Tokyo 2020, the Olympic and Paralympic uh, Games in this summer, uh, were held basically with no spectators. All games were conducted safely, and I can say it was successful, at least in terms of transportation and security. The traffic management in Tokyo generally went well, and there was no damage from cyber attacks or terrorism. It's a pity that uh, there was an accident with the auto automated driving transportation system. Our Japanese society looks calm, calm so far. We had the uh, general, general election in October, 
but there was no major political upheaval. COVID-19 has uh, had an impact on human mind, of course, but uh, it, it may have calmed down to an extent. A number of crimes, number of crimes is continuously decreasing, and there may be no signs of uh, terrorism. Suicides uh, increased last year, but have declined this year. Uh, the number of unemployed people and the job offer rate for new uh, university graduates are also getting better this year. As for trans transportation, road fatalities are decreasing steadily. However, the ratio of uh, pedestrian victims, mainly the elderly, is very high. Traffic, vo traffic, traffic volume fell considerably last year and seems to be uh, recovering recently. Uh, on the other hand, the direction of decarbonization has become much clearer. The government has uh, uh, declared its intention to realize a carbon neutral society by 2050. OEMs are also moving. For example, Honda Motor Company announced that all automobile, automobile sales will be EVs and FCVs by 2040. Automated driving level three under limited conditions has been implemented in Japan and a limited range of uh, level four is also expected to, expected to be implemented soon. While excessive expectations for autonomous driving may be receding a little, it is getting on track gradually within the realistic range. Pedestrian friendly uh, improvement of traffic environment is progressing like many other countries. On the other hand, uh, small ele electric mobility is uh, being recognized and uh, expanding considerably and legal systems for that are expected to be established. Transportation uh, is in a period of major change and expectation for transportation is very high from the perspective of economic and social revitalization. Uh, as I have outlined the, the situation in Japan, uh, I think uh, there are many other issues in Thailand. Uh, transport, transportation related uh, academic societies like uh, Atrons and IATS have various tasks. Uh, these are just examples. Uh, there is a strong need to international need of international cooperation among those societies while recognizing the uniqueness of each country. At IATS, we are steadily uh, advancing uh, research activities by ensuring uh, cooperation with overseas researchers to the extent possible. Uh, this is a list of current uh, research projects uh, of IATS. <clears throat> IATS is uh, trying to enhance uh, activities toward its 50th anniversary in 2024. And I believe it is of utmost importance to uh, respond to the dynamic movement of the world and deepen a wide range of collaborations. I hope we can further substantively cooperate with ATRANS. Uh, I hope uh, uh, that the use, useful discussions will be held at uh, today's conference. And some members from IATS also participate to, uh, today. I would be happy if we could make an impact on society even a little. Uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Kamada-san, for giving the kind welcome message. And next, uh, 
Uh, may I invite uh, His Excellency Mr. Akom, the Vice Minister of the Finance, would like to give the opening remarks, please. Dr. Jula Sukmanov, Chairperson of A-Trans. Mr. Satoshi Kamada, Executive Director of International Association of Traffic and Safety Science, or IATS. <clears throat> A-Trans Honorable Advisor, A-Trans Board and Members, Distinguished Guest Speaker, Ladies and Gentlemen. First of all, I, a very good morning and let me express my sincere gratitude for the honor and the opportunity I have been given to officiate the opening remarks for the 14 A Trans Annual Conference on Transportation for a Better Life, Future Potential of Transportation and Urban Model Post COVID Era Today. It is also my pleasure to welcome all of you to this important gathering. Many of you may have joined A Trans annual conference several times, and some of you may be the first time. So please spare some time out of the academic discussion to enjoy sightseeing of city space along Chapaya River right outside of this hotel. For those who are online, you can tour Thailand through the virtual website. But it's also my pleasure disregarding my capacity whether the former of the Minister of Transport or right now is the uh, Minister of Finance. So, ladies and gentlemen, cities are struggling with the pandemic of COVID-19. Transportation and urban mobility struggle even more unpredictable, uncertain future affecting economy at large throughout the world. By optimistic thinking, the pandemic has also produced tangible impacts on urban mobility, leading to individuals' adjustment, adjustment in daily activities, including teleworking, in-home and out-of-home activities, as well as long-distance travel. We may have to think about how to reshape the urban living model together with sustainable transport development in line with minimum impact on climate change. As I said, this regarding my capacity, though I'm not involving the transport, uh, transportation directly, but the, uh, some of my work still going on with the uh, transport. Transport is one of the area of the economics. So I would like to talk about the economic, more economic uh, today. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic has significant adverse impact on the world economy. As a result, Thai economy contracted by 6% in 2020, the largest contraction since the Asian financial crisis. In this regard, the government responded promptly to mitigate the crisis with urgent measures after initial COVID-19 spreading in Thailand, including no one will be left behind scheme, or in Thai we call the Rao Meeting Gun, which offer cash handout of 5,000 baht to 15 million people affect, affected by the virus pandemic for three months. I guess in Japan too, the cash transfer to the people also uh, done by the, the government as well. Starting in 2021, the Thai economy started to show signs of economic recovery. The latest GDP growth rate of Thailand in the third quarter of 2021 slightly contracted 0.3%, zero, uh, 0 but we got the positive of the 7.6% in the second quarter. And we hope the last quarter of this year, the economy will be improving. So that's mainly due to the, the third wave of the pandemic. However, the situation is better, it's getting better than market expectations. 
The Thai economy has been supported by significant growth of merchandise export and government measures that aim to support domestic economy, boosting people's purchasing power and reducing people's living costs. These government measures are, for example, the uh, stimulus package by giving the uh, 50% of the uh, cash to the uh, daily expense of the people. That's quite popular in Thailand and many countries uh, follow our idea. In order, we got the both uh, objective to help the people and to stimulate the economy as well. So there are various programs, a job retention program as well, to keep the uh, workers in the company and the factory by giving the uh, support for the cash uh, through the social secur security. Our COVID-19 strategy is trying to balance public health safety and economic growth. The government is ready to continuously implement fiscal, financial, and tax measures to support the Thai economy in, in conjunction with continued vaccination program. The COVID-19 situation in Thailand has been improving along with significant progress of vaccines rolled out. This has allowed Thailand to be among the first country in Asia to reopen the country starting from the 1st of November 2021 onwards, leading to economic rebound, especially in tourism, wholesale and retail, transportation and entertainment. So right now we, are, we have already opened our country, but I hope that the uh, Japan we also reopen the country so that the, our people can travel between two countries and help boosting the tourism sector as well. So the Ministry of Finance has, already, has recently forecasted the Thai economic growth would expand it by 1% uh, this year and accelerate to 4% next year, supported by the recovery in tourists, in foreign tourist arrival Furthermore, the strong merchandise export and ongoing government policy implementation would likely remain to be the key driver of Thailand economic growth next year. So despite the improving economic sentiment around the world, some risks remain and are needed to be closely monitored. There are three major areas that we are very concerned about the future risk. First, the risk of new variant of the COVID-19. In Global Health Security Index 2021, compiled by the John Hopkins University, released on the 8th of December this year, out of the 195 countries, Thailand was ranked fifth in the world and first in Asia this year. Thailand has provided remedy to those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as to support the Thai economy. Second, higher energy prices and global inflation. Oil price increases from global economic recovery. Therefore, Thailand also affected, but is moving towards green energy and away from fossil fuel thereby reducing risk on energy price volatility. Third, debt hangover and household debt servicing capacity. The pandemic affected to workers' income in all economic sectors, including industrial, agriculture, and services. As a result, people's spending are restricted. However, workers' income will gradually increase following and improvement of the pandemic situation. Ladies and gentlemen, for immediate term strategy, our priority for next year will be balancing the level of COVID infection and allowing the resumption of economic activities close to pre-pandemic level. The government will continue to implement appropriate infection prevention and control measures 
according to the severity and spreading of disease in each area. Increase vaccine access and allocation for everyone and prepare the action plan to cope with any severe outbreak that might be happen. At the same time, the government will also continue to support the recovery of businesses affected by the pandemic. In addition, we will continue government spending to strengthen the, econ the economy. In 2022, next year, there will be more than 3.6 trillion baht directed towards the economy that compose of the national budget, as well as state-owned enterprise the budget, as well as the, uh, the government urgent emergency uh, borrowing uh, by uh, early uh, this year. So altogether, the capital investment in the Thai economy will reach the one trillion Thai baht for next year. Going forward, the COVID-19 is expected to become an endemic once the economy has recovered to pre-COVID level, the government will shift, out, shift our priority and resources towards enhancing our global competitiveness and achieving the goal of becoming a high-income country by 2037, according to the Thailand 20 years national strategy. This is noteworthy that Sustainable and inclusive growth will be the core of our economic development. To achieve such goal, it requires the right strategies implemented at the right time. The following are the government's plans to transform Thailand's economic structure. First, promoting the high level, promoting high value targeted industry and building a conducive industrial environment. The government has been investing in necessary, in necessary infrastructure and developing the Eastern Economic Corridor as a cluster-based advanced industrial hub that covers three industrial provinces, which are Chonburi, Rayong, and Chacheng Sao. EEC is considered as one of Thailand's most anticipated large-scale projects. Such ecosystem consists of supporting infrastructure that encompass high-speed rail linking three airports, three international airports. Intercity motorway, double track railway, Lam Chabang port, deep sea port phase three, and Mataput industrial port phase three. Second, the acceleration of investment in transport and logistical infrastructure, as this infrastructure will enhance the connectivity, economic opportunity, and expand the investment domestically and regionally. Recently, Laos and China have opened the first Laos-China railway, which connects the capital of Laos and Kunming. In order to seize this opportunity, the government will accelerate the construction of railway network linking Thailand's rail system with Laos and China railway. It would establish seamless linkage between Thailand's rail system and the Laos-China railway. Additionally, this connectivity would enhance cross-border trade investment and tourism. Third, shifting the Thai economy towards the digitalization. Digitalization is another key area to increase Thailand's competitiveness. Digital, infra digital in transformation must be prioritized by both the private and public sectors. The Ministry of Finance is improving public services by introducing electronic tax filing, as well as offering social welfare through national e-payment platform. Successful digital public service programs including the co-payment scheme, as well as the, uh, to stimulate the uh, tourism sector. On this, I think the uh, digitalization has directly involved the transportation. So I think there are several programs by the Ministry 
of transport that encouraged and the uh, transform of the using the public transportation through the electronic means of payment. So I think the, uh, the uh, digital will be involved in our daily life more and more in Thailand. And it's quicker than we expect because of the government program on the cash transfer and the co-payment program that uh, we use the uh, electronic card by uh, electronic card and also the mobile phone application to transfer our money, the government's money to the people's pocket. So that accelerate the, uh, the transformation of the digitalization as uh, uh, quicker than we expect. Fourth, which uh, related to the climate change, the promotion of bio-circular green economy model or BCG model could help sustain the, eco the future of Thai econ economic growth. This economic growth will emphasize creation of the high value products from biological resources, considering reusing various of materials as much as possible and environmental friendly economic development. The government has taken some measures to promote the BCG economic model, such as the issuance of green, social and sustainability bond. Green tax expense, which is giving a 1.25 time tax reduction for biodegradable plastic. And third, the promotion of investment in electric vehicles through BOI incentive, Board of Investment Incentive. Recently, on 25th of November, the Ministry of Finance has joined the ECAT, Electricity Generation Authority of Thailand, to open ELEX, it's kind of the uh, charging station in my office, not my, in, in the Ministry of Finance. So any people who has the uh, use, has been, he's now using the EV or plug-in hybrid can uh, use the, our facility in the charging station within our uh, office. That's the first project uh, for commercial electric vehicle. Charging, state, uh, uh, charging station installed at the, my ministry, promoting the transition to widespread electric uh, vehicle adoption and driving Thailand towards carbon neutrality. Okay. So early next year, the tax structure will be announced to promote the uh, electrical vehicle in Thailand, both uh, passenger cars as well as the motorcycle as well. So that's to help the uh, joining the COP26 in uh, reducing the CO2 in the atmosphere. Fifth, the promotion of SME and startups. As this business play a vital role in driving the Thai economy, in order to provide a comprehensive mechanism to raise funds for SME and startup, the Ministry of Finance has supported the establishment of venture capital, venture capital funds in SME business through the uh, state-owned state -owned banks or the government's banks. Again, this we have joined hand with the National Science and Technology Development Agency or NASDAQ and the Stock Exchange of Thailand as well. So early next year, we hope to issue this tax incentive for the startups and venture capital, not only for Thai venture capital, but also international uh, venture capital as well, to help promote the startup, particularly startup in the digital economy and also the SME. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to our exceptionally strong physical position, the government has been able to manage financing for government spending to support the people and businesses who are affected by the COVID-19, as well as to support economic recovery. As we continue to pursue measures to support necessary infrastructure and investment, we have to ensure that we do not sacrifice our physical integrity. 
the Ministry of Finance would ensure long-term fiscal sustainability and maintain the fiscal uh, discipline. In the implementation of any policies, I would like to assure that the Ministry of Finance would strictly comply the fiscal responsibility law and related fiscal rules to keep our fiscal uh, sustainability. In particular, the public debt to GDP ratio as of October 2021 remained relative low at 58% of GDP, which is still under the Fiscal Responsibility Act threshold, not more than 70%. Prudence in debt management will further help ensure that the interest payments to revenue remains low at around 6 to 7%, enabling budget to be allocated for stimulus and investment. To unleash our potential towards more sustainability uh, recovery, both Ministry of Finance and Bank of Thailand we work closely to ensure that policy coordination between monetary and physical policy would create favorable environment for economic recovery. Importantly, monetary and physical policy must be implemented based on the condition and stage of the Thai economy. Accommodative economic policies are necessary to ensure a robust recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, I think what I have just explained perhaps is not so familiar to all of you because you are uh, transport economics, economist, or engineer. But I would <coughs> reaffirm that despite the pandemic, the government confirmed that yeah, we still need the investment in infrastructure, particularly the in, in transport infrastructure. Despite the restriction, the, the constraint on the budget, the national budget, but the, uh, some of the uh, uh, larger infrastructure will be given to the private sector. So the private sector can take part in the, uh, uh, in the national infrastructure investment program. But of course, the, uh, we still remain commitment our policies, particularly when in my capacity for the past, uh, fiscal policy, especially on the tax policy to help promote the economic uh, recovery. But on the uh, uh, transport, infrastructure and safety measure, certainly any thing that the uh, Ministry of Finance can do, we will give full support to the, uh, what will be discussed in the, uh, the conference today. Ladies and gentlemen, to this end, it is the essential to make a global linkage by regular organizing this international gathering to exchange information and share experiences in transportation amongst countries across the globe. This will benefit the strengthen the cooperation and exploit transport infrastructure and urban developments for mobili mobilization of people in safe, efficient, and friendly manners for the benefit of our dynamic society. I'm certain that we will have more discussed, more to discuss in the conference. I hope you will enjoy and enjoy the discussion of the conference today and make it successful event for all. Now, it is time for me to declare the conference open. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, yeah. His Excellency Mr. Akhom Tembia Paisit. And next, may I uh, kindly ask the minister to remain on the stage so that he can take a group photo with uh, a transport member and also distinguished guest. So, can I invite the uh, Dr. Jula and all the a transport member, please? Thank you.